Can you afford to turn the lights on in your house? What's the problem? Huh? It's just the angle. It's the bad angle. Dude, it's like dark in there. Well, it saves money this way, and, and it's uh, uh, cooler. Cooler this way. And you're tighter than bark on a tree. Hey, you might have to take over the meeting, uh, Mark. So I think I mentioned yesterday I had a conflict. Don't you have a vice chair for that? Yeah, he's got a conflict. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. So we just got to make sure we have enough people. So Dave's actually going to be on as well, but we both have to both have a two o'clock. <laughs> Take this call from Chuck Rohrman. Oh, okay. just. We got to make sure we have enough uh, members here for Dave and I to take off. So, but I see Holly there, which is good. Good to see you. I see Buenos, the mayor there. Your, yeah, hi. Well, uh, Linguinos, I should mention, I, I might get a pulled away for a two o'clock meeting also. So, oh my God. Uh, so I, I'm sorry to do that, but if we could make sure you'll have enough you know, of a quorum to oh. persist, that would help. Well, I'll feel really bad because I don't have a two o'clock meeting. <laughs> 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 but Wayne will be here. Okay. Do we have any other members then? Yolanda, I see. I, I am in now. I see Mayor uh, Newberry from Green Mountain Falls. Okay. How many do we need for a quorum? Five? Yes. And so we have Mark, Holly, Wayne, and Jane. But you said we may lose the mayor. Yeah. I, I'm in the Zenos and you're in, so that gives us a quorum. No, no, but uh, I have to leave, and the oh, mayor says he might have to leave. So that's if it, good. If it comes down to it, if uh, I, I could stay if if I'm urgently needed, so I, I will I will do that. But um, got scheduled to be in two places at once. You know, uh, the other I'm, thing is I I will keep my computer on, and I am serious that if. Um, I am needed to come in to make a call and Andy can jump up and down and I'll come back and let me give you my other cell number because I'll keep this one up. It's 229-8569. Uh, but I will be, literally this will be across the room for me. So if I need to come in, I can come back. And come back. So we have Yolanda with two right now. Yolanda. Okay, that'll work. Mark. And I'm, a, I'm one hour closer to happy hour than you guys are. <laughs> Here too, the swing. And Dennis Carpenter was, I just gave him the numbers to call in. Well, it looks like we're good because we have Wayne, Holly, Mark, Jane. Wait. And Yolanda. So, so do we have eight? Do we have everybody except Dennis Carpenter? Three, three commissioners, three council members. Yeah, so I think yeah, we're good. We have nine. Okay, so I'm gonna, because I have to run off, I have to, I'm gonna defer to, I believe we've elected uh, <laughs> temporarily Mark to run the meeting. Okay, um, I'm gonna need to, who can share the, uh, the agenda, please? Okay, so we'll call the meeting to order. Um, can I have a, a motion? Uh, item number one, call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum, right? I think I heard Rick say that we had a quorum. Yes, B, are you counting nine or eight? I count nine. Okay, so you have Dennis Carpenter on? Yes. Yes, I'm on. Great, okay, we have nine, great. Sounds like a quorum to me. Um, item number two is approval of the agenda. Uh, has everybody had a chance to take a look at the agenda? Uh, and approval so of the agenda. I'll second. Thanks. That's been moved and second. All in favor, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Seeing none, that passes unanimously. Item number three. Public comments on uh, items that are not on the agenda. Do we have anybody in the public on the line at all? 
Uh, Jessica, you know of anybody in the public that wants to uh, testify? I received no messages that there were um, any public comment. And then just a quick reminder to state your name when you make a motion so we can catch those, but no comment. Oh, thank you. All right, seeing no public comment on to item number four, approval of the minutes from the September 9th meeting. Uh, hopefully everybody's had a chance to look at those. Um, if so, could I have a motion to approve the, uh, if, if there are no uh, uh, changes, could I have a motion to approve the September 9th uh, meeting minutes? Commissioner Williams, I will move to approve. Mojino, second. All right, that's been moved and seconded. All uh, those in favor, please uh, respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, uh, uh, that uh, passes you unanimously. Um, item number five, the CAC monthly report. We have the mustached uh, Giannato give us the CAC report. You're uh, you're on mute, Jim. This is Jim Godfrey, uh, chair, current chair of the CAC. Let me make sure I get my unmute. There we go. Um, so um, the first recommendation, the first uh, part of our meeting, um, the city of Colorado Springs gave us an update on the funding for the America the Beautiful Pedestrian Bridge um, and a presentation on the funding and, and the current happenings. Uh, this was on Wednesday following the placement of the bridge on Monday. Um, and I must say that uh, I had the fortune of um, being able to attend that on Monday because I was gonna be out of town for the informal gathering. Uh, it was a pretty amazing process to watch that uh, huge monstrosity moved into place and the precision and safety that displayed by the crews and the city and the planning was um, and all the years we've been uh, haggling and, and dealing with this um, was a pretty amazing accomplishment. It's a beautiful structure and I think it will um, uh, enhance our downtown considerably. So um, it was a great presentation. The city did a great job with that. Um, the city also, um, last month we requested them give us an update on where we were with the remaining RTA1 money. Um, a lot of that money was in the pool. Uh, the city provided uh, a, a listing of how they're moving that money around to complete and move towards the Mark Shuffle 1 or the Mark Shuffle North uh, part of that. That was an information item only. Um, for us, but it provided us some insight as to just where we were with the remaining balances in PPRTA1. Um, the um, City of El Paso County also brought in a, a request and increase for a capital project on I-25 on Bradley Road um, and a change in that, um, a request for a million dollars, I'm sorry, to upgrade um, that they've completed the final design um, and they're requesting um, money to increase in that project to proceed forward um, with that. So we made a recommendation to approve that. Um, and then um, uh, the rest of our, inf our agenda was information. Um, we did have a discussion on PPRTA3. Um, I would request that we, in the interest of time, availability, that um, call on me again when we get to that line item and I can enlighten you with more details on our discussion on that RTA3 workshop. So whatever you need to do. And that concludes the CAC report. Thanks, Jim. Uh, do we have any uh, questions, comments for the CAC or Jim? All right, see. This is Dave, I'll move to approve the report. This is Holly, I will second. That's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of approval of the CAC report, please respond by saying aye. 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 Those nay. All right, the CAC report is passed. Item number six. 
Financials. Um, Good afternoon. This is Beverly. So our August sales and use tax receipts were 10,927,000, which was 1,799,000 over the monthly budget or 19.7%. And we are ahead annually so far through August of the budget, 2020 budget, by 10,855,000 on the first page. Compared to last year's actual 2019 for the month of August, we were ahead by 922,000 or 9.2% in year to date, we're ahead $4.5 million. So we're still going uh, very strong for this year. So, I mean, and that's all sales tax. We're $4 million ahead of where we were last year, even in COVID. That's amazing to me. Yes. There's a lot of construction materials being purchased and construction going on, um, along with a lot of purchases online and then, you know, other things so it doesn't seem I, like I COVID think it slowed shows, us. I think it shows how good we are at predicting yeah for sure well I, well first for sure um ahead of the budget but I'm looking marveling and even ahead of 2019 with all this uh this stuff so uh, you know, I, I know the county is, you know, we're doing all right, um, but I, I, I thought the city is a, a bit behind on um, sales tax from where they were last year, but maybe they're not. I don't know. All right. Um, is that all, Bev? Yes, unless somebody has some questions. Any questions for Bev? All right. Seeing none, do we need to accept or approve uh, the financial report? Uh, no, we don't typically do that. And uh, the next item that I have is um, to set the uh, 2021 budget public hearing date for December 9th at 1.30, and then I'll post it in the paper. Um, I have, on, on Monday, I sent out the draft budget to the board because they have to receive it by October 15th. So that, that, was, that requirement was fulfilled. And you will get it again in your packet for the November meeting when we have the workshop. All right. So I need a motion to set the public hearing date for December 9th at 1.30. All right, I guess before we get to that, any questions for Bev about the uh, hearing date? Uh, this is Rick, a question for Jennifer Ivey, uh, our attorney. Should the motion also acknowledge that the board received the budget, should that be in the minutes or in a motion? Uh, it, I would note it in the minutes, but there's no need to include it in the motion. Uh, we have the email evidence that it was sent out and we have it in our file, so I'm not concerned with that. Thank you. All right, could I have a motion to um, uh, set the uh, public hearing date for the budget as December 9th, 2020 at 1.30 p.m.? Uh, Commissioner Williams, so moved. Mayor Graham, second. Carpenter. All right, that, that's been moved and seconded by Mayor Graham. Uh, all those in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, that passes unanimously. Thank you. Can we go back to the agenda, please? Okay, uh, item number seven, the 2020 capital maintenance and public transportation contracts. City of Colorado Springs. Well, we don't have any contracts this month, but uh, Ryan Phipps is going to give an update on the pedestrian bridge. Awesome. Ryan? Uh, is he on, Mike? Well, he was having trouble getting on. I thought he said he was. He got in. Um, he's on, but he's muted. So, Ryan, you're going to want to unmute yourself. Can 
Ryan, you do that by star six. Oh, he just, he got on my phone. All right, are you able to hear me now? Gotcha. Please proceed. All right, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, as soon as you turned it over to me, my Zoom went down. Um, uh, Ryan Phipps, Senior Engineer, City of Colorado Springs, uh, City Engineering. I've got a, a slideshow to share with you today. I, I presented the memo that you uh, have before you. I'm not gonna read this um, for you. My understanding was that uh, you were just looking for a basic update, which is um, you know, the, the text of, of the memo describes the bridge in full and um, the operation last Monday, which I'll, I'll share some photographs of. Um, but basically, as far as where we're at financially, the, the bridge project itself is projecting to be about a uh, $17 million total cost. Uh, if you've heard anything in the media, it's also, uh, I refer to it as $20 million. That includes the West Landing, which is a separate contract with, that the uh, Southwest Business Improvement District is moving forward with, and that's independent of the uh, table that you see here. Um, but as far as uh, percent spent, um, the, the funds that we received through the Urban Renewal Authority's uh, mechanism with the City for Champions um, uh, project, we have spent down 100% of their contribution of $7.8 million, and that's been used exclusively on the pedestrian bridge contract with Kiwit. Um, PPRTA has spent down about three quarters of the funds that have been committed to the project. Most of those funds have been used for um, the design services, support services, you know, the, uh, um, a lot of the railroad expenses, things of that nature. And now um, we've actually started invoicing the business improvement district and we will utilize the funds from the estate of Ms. Darlene, Mrs. Darlene Johnson. Um, as we move forward, and those will be used on the, uh, the construction contract. So if there's no questions on the memo or any of that, I'll move on to um, the slides. I'll give you a minute uh, as I try to share my screen and share the slideshow. Yeah, any questions about the memo? All right, seeing none, you can proceed when you get the slideshow up. All right, I'm waiting for um, permission to do that. Jessica, if you could give me permission to share. It looks like she's done. You should be able to. It has you as a co-host. Go ahead and give it a try. No, continue. Yes. All right, I'm good now. Okay. All right, can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Let me put you in full screen mode. Uh, this is the rendering that I think that everyone has seen for a couple years now. And um, the reality of this is, 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 is before us now. So going back into the design phase, I uh, just wanted to start kind of where we, we be, but right before we started construction, just a reminder, we, we did put the, the bridge in the wind tunnel test to ensure that it wouldn't have any issues in the wind because it's such a long structure. It's relatively slender. And then it has a couple of the, the rip curls that have the potential of catching wind. And in this image, you can see uh, the pedestrian bridge in the middle, the museum on the right-hand side, and then the, the West Landing on the left-hand side. And, and um, the, the bridge performed very well uh, given all the different conditions that we, uh, we put it through, which was a 500 year type of wind event and uh, did well at all angles. That's super so cool. So about, about, yeah, it's very cool. If anyone's interested in seeing that actual model, we do um, have it here in town. We don't have the cardboard for the museum or the West Landing, but the, the bridge itself uh, is property of the city. Um, so in, let's see, it would have been May of 2019. We, um, began construction. This is the fabrication shop in Houston, Texas, King Fabrication. And they 
had everything show up in plate steel like you see on the left hand side uh, believe it or not just about every single piece on the bridge is flat steel it's been cut and shaped to be that curved and dynamic looking structure um, but they had to cut it and piece it together and it's actually really remarkable the um, integration of the design software that created the model for us to you know that this was based on the, the rendering but then for it then to be transferred into the shop and then um, those guys actually have the tools that were able to transfer it and cut it all up into these puzzle pieces and, and these guys spent a year uh, welding it all together um, you can see here this is this is the fit up this happened in May of this year and uh, the structure is so long it actually extended outside of their shop a little bit but they got everything fit up and sent it to us uh, beginning of June. Um, these are images of the west landing. So that's the, the abutment on the west, or the, I'm sorry, the west abutment. So it's um, the west hand side, it's got that overlook to it. Uh, we've got the four main shafts that support that structure. It's, it's um, uh, just like everything else, nothing's straight on that, that uh, project. Uh, we've got a lot of angle to the um, abutment itself and it's got the overlook so those shafts have been designed to handle a lot of uh, over um, over um, topping type forces eccentric type movements and then you can see that they're starting to put the cage in on the bottom left hand side there was a tremendous amount more steel that had to go in um, but they're all that green you see is the reinforcement as they're uh, beginning to install it so early June the, the structure itself arrived on site and started putting the pieces together. So the, the picture there on the left uh, is one of the pieces as it was unloaded and we're taking a closer look at uh, what had arrived from Texas. Everything was shipped up in six large pieces and um, took quite the effort to get us up here. But uh, Kiwa was able to assemble it on site, the picture you see on the right hand side was after the main structural steel had been assembled and they had started framing or uh, laying all of the reinforcement in the deck. The difference in color that you see under the reinforcement is where the shear plates are in the bridge itself. So the, the area that looks like a darker color, that's, that's a, a solid steel sheet that's a shear plate that transfers forces from the girder to the arch across the bridge and then where you see the lighter color uh, that's actually just stay in place steel formwork and then prior to um, last Monday's bridge move we laid out a, a whole bunch of timbers steel mats everything over the rail yard um, on the bottom right hand side you see one of the SPMT units as it was beginning to jack the bridge from our assembly location those, um, there were four SPMT units underneath the bridge and each with each end had four 250 ton jacks to lift the bridge, which was 550 tons. Um, prior to the move on Monday, they actually swung it into place Friday afternoon and uh, had it all positioned. And it was, uh, I drove by on Saturday and it was, it was something to see, see it all ready to go. So this is an image from Monday morning, right, right as the last train passed through. Um, 7.44 was our official closure time of the railroad. Um, they passed about three trains that morning um, after they said they would give us the track, but uh, they had to get those guys through and um, delayed our start by 44 minutes. But as soon as we got it, they started swinging uh, the bridges into place and we'll go back again. Uh, the, the crane you see in the middle um, was starting to, to, to swing the metal bridges into place that were covering the last four tracks. We, we needed to make that uh, a quick type of um, effort. So we used prefabricated steel bridges to drive the SPMT over. So this is an image as the bridge is moving across those bridges that were swung into place over the four most used tracks. The railroad allowed us to close down the yard for longer than just that eight hour window they initially granted us. It's another image as it's getting closer to the museum. Um, 
it, it came right up to um, the event space of the museum. So it was a really good view while they were removing the, the that steel bridge that the SPMTs utilized across the four tracks, uh, gave people in that, that event space a really good view down the length of the bridge. This is as they're adjusting it and about ready to move it, the bridge north and set it on the abutments. And then this is um, the superintendent for the job, Chris Polk. He was the first guy to walk across the bridge after it had been set into place uh, on its abutments. So this is the last image I have, and this is a, a view looking to the west along the bridge. You can start to see how, how it sort of fits into the landscape of the built and natural environment. Uh, next steps for the bridge now, now that it's in place, we, we picked up all the, the timber and steel that we had on the, on the track. The last of it's still there, but is scheduled to be removed uh, by the end of day this Friday. Um, that's co currently covering the spur that CSU utilizes for the power plant, Drake. Um, they're expecting a coal delivery this Sunday. So we'll have everything off the tracks and cleared as if we weren't there by the end of this week. Um, we still have work to do on the bridge itself. So you'll see interior cladding going up here towards middle end of November. It's a steel paneling that's similar to what you see on the Olympic Museum. It's not diamond shaped, but it's that kind of the modular steel paneling. You'll see hand railing going up and the hand railing itself has embedded lights in it. So uh, it will light the deck uh, as you walk across. There's also some lighting that's um, embedded in the deck itself that will shoot up on the center part of the bridge, the oculus area to highlight that architectural feature. And then you'll see uh, netting going up that will, will provide even more protection that's a requirement of the railroad. They, they want to have a 10 foot tall barrier for any bridge that goes across railroad property. And so we'll, and instead of using what's typically used, which is a chain link fence, we'll be using a really thin, um, a fine mesh netting, steel netting, netting that's uh, similar to what they have at the museum side against that bike trail. Uh, so it'll look very similar to what's already out there, but it provides um, that protection that the railroad requires, but it looks a whole lot nicer than chain link fence. Um, so we'll be done with the, the pedestrian bridge project uh, around the first of the year, probably in early January. And then on the west side, before we can open it to the public, the Southwest Business Improvement District is constructing an elevator and a staircase that will allow uh, pedestrians and cyclists to cross the bridge and then basically be um, uh, taken down to ground level and be right at the entrance to America the Beautiful Park. So at this point, um, we've got to clean up the yard that we were, we were staging and assembling the bridge in. And then as soon as we're, we're done with that, uh, the, the elevator and staircase contractor will be moving in. And we're, we're expecting everything to be open to the public in spring of 2021. Um, Awesome. The city uh, created a shortcut to all of the information. If you're interested in looking into any more of that, uh, just call around spring.gov backslash pedestrian bridge. Um, and it's got the time lapse. It's got a bunch of video, got a bunch of photographs, fact sheets, all of that kind of business. Uh, if you are interested in, in any of these, I think most of these pictures are actually images that are available on the internet. So uh, any questions? Any questions at all for Ryan? All right, seeing none. Um, you didn't have anything else? I don't have anything else to add. I'm going to stop sharing and, and jump off. I appreciate your time and uh, look forward to opening this to the public and you all get to experience it uh, for yourself. It's a beautiful right. project. Thank you. And uh, Mike Chavez, did you have anything else for us? Uh, no, I just the uh, next item, uh, RTA one funding, but nothing on this. So our next item is uh, just an update on the RTA one project funding that's uh, kind of remaining. So we've got about 1.5 million dollars that's unspent, and 
we're looking at using it in the following manner. We're going to use 214,000 of it to um, um, do some uh, design work on the 30th Street improvements. Uh, we're going to basically uh, change order that into FHU's contract as they are finishing up the final design and construction support design services. Uh, so a final design is getting close to being completed and uh, then we'll start construction in late 20, uh, 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 commencing in the spring of 2021. So that, that'll use up that 214,000. On the Pikes Peak Greenway, uh, the Parks Department it has a grant to do some improvements on the Greenway Trail from Rock Rimmon up to uh, uh, Conwood Creek. And they're going to use that 41000 for construction management services. They're looking at advertising and awarding that contract uh, late this year. And then they'll start the actual construction in early 2021. And then the remainder of the money, about $1.3, is being used on the Mark Sheffield Bridge over Sand Creek. That's under construction right now. Uh, we expect to be about 75% uh, complete at the end of the year. The remaining work next year will be like uh, stabilization, uh, you know, erosion control, and things that kind of need to be done in the spring. And so that'll pretty much use all the rest of the RTA1 money. So I think we're thinking by the spring, we should have this money all spent. Is there any questions on that? Excellent. Anything? All right, thanks. Uh, thanks for the presentation, Mike. All right. Explanation. Um, I think we're on to the county. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Board of Directors, Jennifer Irvin, El Paso County. Mr. Chair, would it make sense for me to, uh, both next two items on the agenda are on the same project it might make sense for me to address them both at the same time. Is that okay with you? Yes, and just so for record keeping, we are on items, again, I can't see the, uh, um, I can't see the agenda, but it's what, seven C and D, something like that. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, I didn't have the agenda in front of me either, so that's why <laughs> I was a little bit vague, but, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Jennifer Irvin, El Paso County, like I said. Um, today we have two requests related to the South Academy Boulevard project. And um, uh, the two requests are a, a, an overall budget increase of a million dollars, which would be allocated as part of our 2021 budget. So it's in the, the budget uh, that you see today. And then also just the contract award for the uh, second phase of the design, which is the final design phase. So as we were entering this project, if you remember um, uh, last June, I came before you and we talked about uh, a build grant. And so as part of that, uh, we committed um, $18 million of the PPRTA budget for um, the, the construction phase of that. And that was to be uh, used in addition to a certain amount of federal dollars and uh, local road and bridge money from the counties road and bridge fund for the construction phase. And so that left a certain amount of money for the design phase of the project. As we uh, began the preliminary design, uh, a concept and preliminary design phase of the project and have, uh, have finished that, we have identified um, some additional um, scope uh, as part of the overall project. Uh, we had six bridges. And so as we were evaluating those bridges, uh, trying to understand what the scope of that project was, um, it's gotten to be a little bit more extensive than it was originally thought. So um, what we're asking for today is an additional million dollars that will help us go ahead and finish up the design. We um, anticipate the de design to be done uh, within the next year in 2021 and to be able to move that forward into construction to, to 2022. Um, the uh, memos are pretty extensive as far as hopefully explaining those very well. So um, at this point, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. All right, do we have any questions for Jennifer? Uh, 
All right, seeing none, you can proceed. The, the second item is just the contract amendment for the, the project for with AECOM to add in that $2.4 million for the final design. Um, this actually covers final design for the overall project, um, but then also um, includes preliminary design for the, the bridges. The original scope of the work for the, the project included just concept design for the um, uh, for all of those six bridges. So this should get us to um, uh, final construction, as I talked about uh, just now. Uh, again, uh, clearing up that design and, and finishing up that in 2021 and going to construction in 2022. We will have some early action items, I believe, in 2021. Um, to because there are items we believe that we can advance into construction. And uh, just a reminder, we have six bridges. Uh, we have a crossing over the railroad, we have right of way acquisition, and then we also have some sound walls over um, by the Stratmore Valley area. Um, this project is being yeah. done in conjunction with the CDOT build grant, and we're working very closely with CDOT, and uh, that, this project is moving along very well. Any questions on the contract amendment? Uh, do we have any questions on the contract amendment? All right, could uh, Jessica, could, could you take us back to the um, uh, back to the agenda, please? Okay, so we have um, an, a motion to approve seven uh, D. This is Commissioner Williams. I move to approve um, item 7D, the contract amendment for um, Academy I-25 to Bradley Road. Thank you. Uh, can I have a second, please? Anybody? This is Carpenter. I'll second it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. All right, all those in favor, uh, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay? I guess that passes unanimously. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all, have a great day. <laughs> Thanks. Um, all right, uh, well, I hope we still have a, a quorum here. Get, wait, can you go back to the agenda, please, for just a sec? You move a little too quick for me there, Jessica. All right, item number eight, other reports, uh, the monthly transit uh, report, uh, Mr. Blewett. Yeah, this is quick. Can you hear me okay, uh, Mr. Chair? Gotcha, thanks. Great, uh, again, uh, this is Craig Blewett. Uh, and the services manager with the city of Colorado Springs. Um, our monthly report is in your agenda and just to go over a few highlights. Um, our local uh, bus service, still with the impact of the pandemic, our, our ridership is about half of what it was a year ago, same month, month of August. Um, and as I've noted before, we are operating at near full bus service. And so that lower ridership does allow our passengers to practice social distancing while riding. So, we're within um, state expectations in terms of capacity of a bus uh, to be safely operating during the pandemic. The, um, and our boardings, um, let's see, our, uh, I guess for ADA uh, paratransit service, our Metro Mobility service, um, similarly, we're down about 60%, but as the, uh, the bar graph illustrates at the bottom of the page, we are steadily growing our ridership with ADA, ADA paratransit. We've uh, doubled our ridership in the past three months. Um, as I noted last month, um, some of the, uh, the day programs like Goodwill are starting to open back up. And as they open up, that's gonna increase um, our ridership. Um, the, uh, the van pool similarly is, is still down as uh, people um, are tending to tel telecommute instead of driving to Denver. And as I've noted in the past as well, uh, most of our van pool participants, riders, have access to a car. And so during the pandemic, if they're nervous about riding with other folks, they typically do have an option to travel. But as the uh, pandemic wanes, um, we expect our, our ridership to come back. 
We also have a um, couple things noted in our project updates. And what I'd like to talk about is not on there. Um, we did a, a rider survey. And uh, for our, our bus riders, we did that right before the pandemic hit. So we got a good survey done. Our consultant since that time has been crunching the numbers and is now finalizing uh, its report. Uh, we've seen a first draft. Um, and so that's something I, I would like to present to the board, hopefully next month in November, it would be a, a summary of that um, rider survey report and with some of the key takeaways. There's some, there's some really good stuff in there. So we'll be uh, talking about that hopefully next month. But that I'd be happy to answer any questions the, the board would have. All right, thanks, Craig. Any questions for Craig? All right, seeing none, on to the next item. Can you take us, there you go. Uh, item uh, 8B, City of Colorado Springs Monthly Change Order Property Acquisition Report. Hello, am I up? Yep, go ahead, Mike. Okay, sorry, I was just talking around. For, uh, so I have the, uh, the uh, change order log. Uh, if there's any questions on that, I'll take those as an informational item. Any questions on the change order log? All right, seeing none, uh, let's move on to, I believe, item number nine. Uh, administrative action reports. All right, let's hear about the workshop, uh, Jim. Okay, um, thank you again, Jim Godfrey, Chair of the CAC. Um, so <clears throat> we had about an hour to hour and a half or so discussion on um, the matrix that Rick's is, is, is in your packet. Uh, our focus this past month was uh, on program funds and <clears throat> good discussion. Um, I must say that um, the county, Jennifer Irvin and Gail from the city uh, also weighed in and provided uh, useful information on our discussion. And um, the CAC agreed that and recommends that we leave the ability to have program funds up to each entity. Um, part of that recommendation was because um, the county and the city, as we understand, have different rules in terms of uh, managing road funds. Um, and some entities uh, may not choose to create uh, some program funds. Uh, and just limit their their allocations to uh, a listed project. Um, those program funds are a listed projects, um, and so the 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 project or a group of program funds, for instance, uh, intersection improvements, uh, public safety, and right and right away uh, side sidewalks and roadway improvements are are a listed projects. Um, in the way of, of a brief background, um, it was only this past year, I believe, um, if it wasn't, it was the latter part of last year, that the CAC really had insight into what work was being planned within these groups of projects and program funds. Um, and I, I commend the city for providing us uh, insight into what they were planning to do with that money because quite honestly I think none of us really had an idea um, the detail wasn't provided in the budget it was just a general description but what in fact was being planned was um, not known to us and so the city came forward provided a list of proposed projects or stuff that they were planning on and that improved our confidence and our knowledge of what was going on within those programs. And so that was a great uh, plus for us. Um, I think there was confusion um, as board members and as CAC members have come and gone off of the respective groups 
um, just what these things were intended to do. Um, and as Gail presented last month in their um, more detailed, in-depth quarterly report, um, not only um, are um, the dollars that are attributed to these shown, but there's more detail in terms of the projects that the city is planning on using these funds for. Um, we as a CAC agree that these project funds um, aff afford flexibility to the engineers um, and uh, it's impossible to try to think of every intersection or every crosswalk or sidewalk that you're going to put in over a 12-year, 10 or 12-year planning period and be held to that and that in order to move forward on some things you need that flexibility. Um, I used an example of this, if you had a, a, a large water main break in the middle of an intersection or the edge and you had to take down um, the signals and this other kind of stuff uh, in order to fix that and facilitate that repair. It doesn't make much sense to put the old stuff up. Go ahead and upgrade that intersection while you've got it torn down. And that's what uh, these project funds, uh, an example of what some of these project funds are being used for. And so our recommendation is that we approve the use of um, um, program funds um, by the entities. Uh, and the word guardrail is in here and that may have a negative uh, connotation. Um, I think the purpose here was that there is some definition and guidelines of the kinds of things that can go in these program funds. Uh, in terms of their use um, so that it's clear to members of the public, the CAC, and the board of what's the intended purpose of these funds and some examples of the kinds of things that they're planning on doing with those, understanding that those plans may change as developments occur and reality uh, goes along. Um, so, <clears throat> We do not believe that they ought to be a priority to those named projects, that they ought to be enlisted uh, in alphabetical order. And on, on item 1D and E, uh, excuse me, um, C and D are the regional grant match program and the regional federal state companion project funds. We agree that there should be um, those items listed as within that alphabetical list of a project, but no funding uh, initially. Um, and that, um, but we need more definition about what type of projects would fall under those categories so that we show the public that um, it's not just a, an open ability to put money into something, but that there be some kind of definition. And we did not have that and what the intent of those projects should be. Um, and I think that we agreed that it would eliminate the need for us to go back to the public to have to spend $200,000 uh, like we had to do for the gap that by having these project categories listed with some definition and understanding of what type of projects would fall under them, that it would be easier for the board, the CAC, to move money into those projects when the need arises, such as like the bill program or something where we've got a great opportunity to take advantage of state and federal money, but we need a grant match and it makes sense from a regional or from a locality perspective to be able to do that without having to go back to the public. So um, our recommendations were approve 1A um, for each entity to use program funds as they see fit, but provide some guidelines and the definitions of, of those in terms of rules of engagement. And then that we approve the uh, regional grant match and the regional federal state companion project funds as items within the list of a project. 
and that concluded our discussion on PPRTA3 for this month. Interesting. Um, any uh, questions or comments for Jim? It, was this um, was this emailed to us? So it I was. Go ahead, it Jim. Was, it was in the packet. I'll be more than glad to email this matrix to you or have Rick do it. Yeah. Would somebody please do that? I'd appreciate it very much. Yeah. All right, um, seeing no other questions for uh, Jim on this. Yeah, again, please get that emailed out to us. Can we go uh, back to the, um, well, is there any, any more discussion on this topic at all? Let me just uh, say, Jim, thank you for the work y'all have done on that and uh, appreciate your looking at these issues because I do think it's important and I would suggest that uh, uh, Jennifer and, and uh, Travis and his team and Jennifer's team can come up with what those definitions might be. And so, you know, when you talk about what a regional project is or a, a build grant or so, I guess I would ask if the city and county engineering departments could kind of maybe do some work as to how you would phrase that. because. Uh, I, I do think you're right. You want to have some guidelines and some guardrails to uh, protect, but I think they may have kind of a better idea of what type of federal and state uh, grants there may be that, and so they can word it appropriately. So I guess that's what I would ask that this board do is ask the city and county engineering to get together and come up with some definitions here. I think that's a wonderful idea. Mike, are you, Mike and Jennifer, are you guys willing to do that? This, you know, yeah, we can do that. Sorry, I mute myself. Okay. Jennifer, are you still on? I am, I uh, was just trying not to go over somebody um we are happy to work with the city um that's uh, i think uh rick reached out after the pprta cac meeting and that's what i was planning to do on anyway excellent thanks and i'd just like to really say that um we've made sure that in our discussions about this that um we try to include um jennifer gail and mike uh and the, the, the professionals input into this, although the, the, the CAC has uh, a lot of engineers on here, we're not in the current administration and we certainly don't want to make a recommendation that would tie the hands of the tremendous progress that we've made over the years uh, in doing something. Um, I think our goal has been and will continue to be accountability and transparency to the public and um but at the same time uh, we just want to make sure that we're able to do that without tying the hands and be over we don't want to be over restrictive to progress yeah i appreciate that very much jim and yeah thanks uh, again to the cat for all their hard work on this all right uh, is there any more discussion on this uh agenda item all right, seeing none, could we go back to the um, agenda, please? Okay, appointment reappointment for uh, CAC members. This is Rick, I'll take that one. Um, this is just an information item. Uh, the CAC is uh, on a prorated basis, they're on staggered terms, so the uh, the eight members uh, listed here are those that are, whose terms are up December 31 of 29 of, sorry, 2020, typo. Um, the the uh, member government CAC members, CTAP, HAC, uh, Mantu, Green Mountain Falls, and Rayma, those are, they have terms, but no term limits. So they, they can be reappointed indefinitely. The, uh, 
the CAC bylaws state that the at-large and at-large alternates um, have a maximum of two year terms each. So you can see number five there, Brian West uh, is now, is about to complete his second full term and is not eligible for reappointment uh, to this position. So the, the memo indicates that the, uh, the board will need to take some action. Uh, first of all, we'll wait and see if uh, Rick Hoover, Carlos Perez and Ed Dills all request to be reappointed. And then we'll, we'll see if the, those uh, requests come in in early November. And then, uh, then I'll have something on the uh, board's agenda for November with regard to reappointments and or advertising for uh, additional applicants. So just information at this point. Any, are there any questions? Any questions for Rick? All right, seeing none, thanks for that update, Rick. Can we go back to the agenda, please? All right, um, the staff field review report, is that uh, you as well, Rick? Yes. Uh, it's just my quarterly drive around to confirm uh, what the uh, member governments have reported that they've completed for the quarter. And that report is, is in your packet uh, uh, with some minor uh, edits. Uh, so it's just an information item. Be glad to take any questions. Any questions on the staff field review report? All right, seeing none, how about uh, update on the gap? Uh, we're two years in, you'll remember the uh, um, groundbreaking was September of 2018, believe it or not. So we're two years in and we have about two years to go. So this is uh, the uh, information I've received from my CDOT contact to just update you. Uh, no, nothing major, just uh, they're reporting that, that they're making, making good progress uh, towards the completion of uh, late 2022. Boy, it is coming along. Uh, I was, uh, I've been on that stretch a few times in the last couple of weeks and it does seem like it's coming along. So just information item, be glad to take any questions, although I'm not going to be able to answer any detailed questions, but be glad to take any questions. Any questions about, uh, you know, um, how much load the bridges can take and stuff <laughs> like that for Rick? <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Item number 10, uh, member announcements. Do we have any of those? All right, seeing no member announcements, um, I would say we stand adjourned, but I guess I have to get approval for that. Um, I, I move that we adjourn. Uh, can I have a second? Second. All those in favor of adjourning, please respond by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed, nay. All right, seeing no passes, we are adjourned. <laughs> have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good luck, Jim. <laughs>